Hello everyone, and welcome to Etalan. As the year finally comes to an end, I wanted to try and get back to finishing some dolls I had previously abandoned during the year. In previous videos, I've spoken about how I tend to shelve a lot of projects, or never end up showing the dolls I've finished due to perfectionism. I'm really trying to move away from my perfectionist tendencies for the new year, so I thought it would be nice if you joined me as I finish off some shelved dolls. I first started out doing this with my anime colour demon, so I wanted to continue on with this doll. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe, I'd really appreciate it so much. Let's get started! The doll I'm going to be customising today is this Lorna McNessie doll from the Monster High range. This doll has to be up there with my top favourite dolls and figure sculpts ever. <laughs> just look at the Celtic tummy and the fins, oh, it's just beautiful. The face-up portion of this customization was filmed back in March. You can kind of tell somewhat already from the old setup that I had in the start of the video. I was about to start the face-up when Fergus my bird rudely interrupted me by getting tangled in my hair. He was only about six months old here, bless him. To start off this custom, I stripped the head with 100% acetone and a cotton swab. I removed the hair and head by placing the vinyl in hot water and removing it from there. I gave her head a really good clean and sprayed her with a coat of Mr. Super Clear Matte Varnish. This will help in the application of her new face. Using Faber-Castell watercolour pencils, I start in developing her eyes. As said before, I started this custom back in March. I did the hair and I did the face and I was going to work on the clothes, but I didn't end up posting it or even finishing the doll. If you follow me on Instagram or TikTok, you may have seen a snippet of it, but I didn't post it on my YouTube. I'm not really sure why again I shelved this doll in particular. I suspect it was due to lack of motivation in my work at the time. Knowing me, I probably thought it looked terrible at the time, but looking back, it's definitely a very cute doll, and I don't know why I thought that. They just needed some quality time and TLC to be finished. It's definitely important to just step away sometimes, especially with art. It helps in seeing things clearer and through a more calm lens. You know what I mean? This doll was done such a long time ago, I never really established a story or a character for this doll. I don't really have much to talk about in terms of story or character creation in regards to this doll. Normally I like creating characters around my doll. It helps in doll customization as you have a story and so you know what you're going to be putting in different places and how to make the character look the way that you want it to be portrayed by others. As this doll was shelved, I don't even remember the original intentions of this customization. Coming back to it, I just ended up freeballing the doll and doing whatever. Sometimes that's the best. When I was editing the video, I felt bad. I just didn't really know what to talk about in terms of her character design or anything. I thought it would be nice just to catch up with you all and just have a chat, I guess. This year has been strange. Very strange. Terrifying and honestly just never ending. But I'm glad at least I got to make my dolls and I'm grateful that you came to watch them and see how they're made. It really means a lot to me. Apparently getting into art and crafts has been really popular this year, especially during quarantine. Have you yourself done any arts or crafts this year? Started a new hobby maybe, or joined a new fandom? I love hearing about these things and it's always so interesting. I for one got into Star Wars more. I got into it at the end of last year with the release of Fallen Order and Mandalorian, but definitely have indulged my interest there by watching the movies and the shows and playing more games. I ended up actually using this new interest in this doll later on.
For the iris, I used Vallejo paints and a small detail brush to paint the designs. When I went over the doll's eye again this week, I added some small etchings of dark blue, medium blue, light blue and white just to make it a little bit more multi-dimensional. For her skin texture, I had decided on doing white and blue freckles on the cheeks and nose and have her have high cheekbone and bottom eyelid blushing along with inner eye corner shading in brown. I ended up going over this texture later on off camera when I went back to the doll. I just blended it in a little bit more with a little bit of blue and it just tied all the colours together nicely. With this doll's face, while I developed it on film, I did go over the small bits of detail later on. I changed the eyebrows to match the new hair colour. The brows I did were green because originally the doll had green hair, but I ended up removing it. Before, I had a white and green synthetic hair blend into an ombre effect with a woven parting design. While this was definitely cute and I liked it at the time, I decided on changing it. I think synthetic hair is beautiful and works amazing on dolls and I really liked the colour variation I did. But I just wanted to have an excuse to do yarn hair and I also felt as if the hair was too much with the small body. It's really interesting to go over my old work. Even if it's only a few months old, it's nice to see how I've changed techniques or developed different techniques. Something that I was actually thinking of doing in the new year is to recreate one of my first dolls to compare the techniques. I thought that would be kind of fun to do. While personally I don't like setting New Year's resolutions, I definitely have a lot of ideas that I want to try out for the new year. While it can be anxiety provoking thinking about the future, especially in such turbulent times, it's always nice to find solace when focusing on the small things, like what you're going to customise, what game you're going to play, what you're going to paint, what book you're going to read, or when your plant is going to give you a new leaf, all things like that. I think that's why so many people found refuge in art this year, like I did when I first started out. Sometimes you just need to hide away from the world and take time for yourself in hobbies. It's good for the soul and good for your health. With the hair, I decided on going with a dark blue and white mixture. Using 100% acrylic yarn wefts, I brushed it out and pressed it with a straightener. Using craft glue, I made the wefts. I will be using the same yarn I used for my Melancholia doll and my White Rabbit a couple of months back. I did quite a sloppy and patchy blend of the two colours. This wasn't out of laziness, it was quite intentional I promise. I wanted it to look like crashing waves when you're underwater. I mapped out 10 spots on her head that would be sectioned away from the rest of the hair. This is because I'll be doing a braid design, so I wanted to make sure that I planned beforehand so that the wefts are facing the right way. The boxes you can see with the red X's in them will have the wefts facing outwards, so when I braid it, they will be flipped backwards to make a hairline. There will also be two braids at the nape of the neck. I started out the design by putting the hair down that will be framing the face. On top of that, I'll be adding the wefts that will be incorporated into the hairstyle. With 10 temporary braids, they will be polished up later, 
I start adding the rest of the wefts. Once the whole head is covered, I'll go over the hair again with a straightener just to clean it up a bit. The style I'm going to be doing is a multi-braid half updo, mimicking that of Daenerys Targaryen's Dothraki braids, but adding two braids at the nape of the neck that will drape on the front of the doll. Nape braids with the blue and white was done because I wanted it to look like crashing water, but also give a very slight nod to Ahsoka Tano, a character from Star Wars with her Togruta head tails. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. <laughs> In assembling the hairstyle, I grab the two most top braids and place them directly backwards. Then grabbing the two closest braids, I three strand braided those down and secure it with an elastic. Grabbing the next braids, I do the same again and again until I run out of braids. with low action. 
Once I was happy with how the hair looked and the face up, I moved on to the body and clothes. However, I decided against actually giving her clothes. Her body design is honestly just so beautiful, I just didn't want to cover it up. I decided instead to enhance her sculpt by painting it. I decided to do a wash of blue and turquoise all over the scales and tummy area. Doing a wash will make it so that the low-lying areas will be filled in with the paint where the higher areas won't. I was inspired to do this as I recently got myself a Thane Krios figure from the Mass Effect series. The painter enhanced the scales on his skin by darkening the lower-lying areas, and I wanted to do the same with this doll. The Thane Krios figure was honestly such a life goal for me. I know it's so random, but I think it was just something that I've wanted for such a long time. I said in my Q&A recently that the reason I got into doll customising and figure customising is because of those figures and how I couldn't afford them at the time or couldn't find any way of actually getting them. And now I have one and I feel extremely accomplished. The figure took 5 hours of driving to pick up, but it was so worth it. The paint job and sculpt is honestly just so inspiring, I just, it, I'm taken away by any time that I look at it. It's made me just so excited and inspired for the future, and what I can do for my own figures. I just feel very happy to have it, and I'm happy that I'm able to translate the inspiration that I got from it into this doll. For her fins and tail, I painted it purple and blue in an ombre design. Later I'll be rubbing some duochrome pigment all over those areas to give it an amazing multi-dimensional look. I thought it made it look similar to what fish scales look like up close when you're underwater. They shimmer in the rays and it just looks absolutely amazing, it's, it's honestly like magic.
For her tummy, I really wanted to enhance that Celtic knock design that's all over it. I wanted it to stand out the most of the doll body. I do this by watering down some light blue and white to enhance those areas. Once I was happy with how the doll looked, I gave her a spray of Mr. Super Clear Flat Varnish. This is very similar, but not the same as a matte varnish, the one that I used on the face. It gives an amazing glossy matte finish, the perfect in-between of the two finishes. Using a matte spray on Shimmer or Sparkles can nullify these effects. I personally have accidentally used a matte on a metallic figure before, and it just muted the entire paintwork. It was extremely disappointing, but as always, it's always a learning lesson, and you have to have failure in order to know how to progress. Once I was happy with how she looks, I just cleaned her up a little bit to give her some photos. Thank you so much for watching, let me know what you think of her in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button to support the channel. If you'd like to support me further head over to my Patreon. Shout out to my already existing patrons, it truly means so much to me. 
I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and see you in the next video.